Okay, hit it. at the Comedy Cellar. I mean, I'm just a professor, you know. They didn't teach us this in graduate school. But good evening, everybody. Glenn Lowry, Brown University. I am with Roland Fryer, Harvard University. Coleman Hughes, extraordinary musician, podcaster, and writer, Columbia University graduate, and our host, Norm. <laughs> We've got some talented comics in the audience. The uh, theme tonight is comedy and politics. Now, I came to this uh, from many years of trying to write about race and racial inequality issues in America and finding that there were uh, third rails. There was stuff that you couldn't say. There was a lot of political correctness. There's a lot of self-censorship. Uh, and I have this idea. My idea, and we'll see what my colleagues here think about it, here at the Glenn Show, I don't think I said that. That's my, that, that's my platform, that's my podcast uh, newsletter at Substack, and you can find a YouTube channel, Glenn Lowry Show. But uh, uh, trying to talk about these issues in a way that opens up some space for exchange of ideas, for grappling with the stuff that we really have to grapple with if we're going to get to be a, in a better place. And for letting some air into the room, uh, the stifling suppression of debate and open discussion leads to a limiting of our own ability to think about the issues that we're confronted with. And I see comedy, I mean, again, I don't know what my esteemed colleagues will say about this, and I certainly don't know what you comics out there are going to say about this. We're going to find out. I see comedy as a way out, as a way to open up the room as a way to get some honesty into the discussion, as a way to have some debates. Now, my mouth is not a prayer book, but I do have some ideas. <laughs> uh, here's some things that I wish comics would help us talk about. Male-female cooperative and non-exploitative relationships in the workplace have been undermined to women's detriment by the Me Too movement. I don't agree with that. <laughs> Wait a minute, I got it from you. <laughs> That's a fair point. Trump wasn't wrong about everything. There really are some shithole countries. You'd remember if you'd ever been in one. And the Democrats have been running some of the cities where a lot of black people live into the ground for decades. Here's another one, folks. Embrace yourselves. I'm sorry. Putin has some legitimate grievances which we have ignored in part at our peril because of the Russia collusion hoax. Uh -oh. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. Okay. You, you see some black guys up here, right? <laughs> We're, we're only like 5% into this list, so. <laughs> Buckle up. Blacks suck at IQ tests. Jews don't. It really matters. Here's an easy Mazel one. Mazel tov. <laughs> Here's an easy one. Our collective response to the COVID pandemic has had elements of an irrational moral panic. Yeah. <laughs> now, an English professor whom I know and respect told me there's a difference between when you say something and they clap <laughs> and when you say something and they laugh. He said, remember, you're in a comedy club, so I'm going to try to keep that in mind. OK, maybe one, one more. Well, maybe two more. <laughs> Major elements of Black Lives Matter are full of shit and undeserving of the mantle of the civil rights movement. Yeah, I know, I know. It's hard. And by the way, all I'm suggesting is let's talk about this stuff. This is not really my opinion. I'm, I'm not actually saying this. These are just things that I think only a comic could get away with saying. We need to talk, along with Dave Chappelle, 
about whether the transgender rights movement is normalizing mental illness. <laughs> Here's my coda. Mind you now, I'm not actually saying these things. I'm just saying that if one were to say them, it could be done most effectively in the voice of a comic. Smile when you say that has a deep meaning. My challenge to the real comics in this room is whether they agree with me or not, and I suspect they mostly don't, <laughs> find ways of bringing considerations of these issues into the public consciousness. So that's what I'm trying to do here in this conversation, encourage us to engage with these issues, and I invite my colleagues, Roland and uh, Coleman, to uh, weigh in. Roland? On what? What are we supposed to weigh in on? Can I can I bring up uh, some of the comics too to join us? Absolutely. All right. So we have uh, some fantastic comics here, all of whom I would say are pretty fearless. Uh, first of all is Andrew Schultz, uh, in the podcast MTV's Guy Code. He's also uh, selling out Radio City Music Hall uh, in two weeks. When are you doing Radio City? Uh, two weeks. In two uh, weeks. April sixteenth. April sixteenth. What's your view I, I, on Black IQ, Andrew? Uh, where are you supposed to sit? Andrew, you're supposed to sit over here, Liz. Oh, I think Liz... Uh, uh, this is the white This is the white one. <laughs> get, get, get the fuck off my bus. Is his mic working? Uh, check, check, check. Hello? Oh, you're in trouble already. See what happens to white voices? <laughs> <laughs> when black people start speaking up, that's better. Okay. Right. Uh, Shane Gillis, uh, Comedy Central, Series X. Hey! Almost, almost on SNL. We probably want to <laughs> talk some about that. Uh, clap for Shane Gillis. Come on. Hey. Hey. Hey, how are you? Can, can Shane come down here with me? I, I want to talk about black athletes. Uh, yeah, hell yeah. <laughs> uh, Judy Gold. The, you know, we, we have to update these credits. Uh, Judy has a book out about free speech, and it's not even on, on your credits. Come on up, Judy. Judy! <laughs> Shane, Shane didn't want to sit next to Andrew. And, uh, and TJ. Come on, TJ. You need more credits here. From Amazon Prime and Fox, TJ. Clap your hands, everybody. Come on. Give it up, TJ. Where is he? Hello. Oh, there he is. And also, we have another comic uh, who's here, uh, his last minute edition. His name is Mr. Rick Chrome. And uh, maybe, Rick, maybe you come up and share the stool with me. I don't know. Come on up here, Rick. Where are you? I think he'd like that, actually. <laughs> we might need another chair. Share the stool with you. Come on. Like we've never done that before. <laughs> come on, Rick. Oh, I moved over. I'll just come stand, just come stand oh, behind you. Okay. Okay, now you have primary source material here, Glenn, to discuss exactly what you want. Go ahead. Okay, you guys. Can we start with black IQ shit? Because that stuff still got to go on. <laughs> Who wants to take that one up? I got it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I thought every premise you brought up was pretty good. <laughs> Can you say it again? What was it? What was the All the black premises IQ were good thing? for stand up. I mean, yeah. All right, whatever. All right, well, let's take one of them and run with it. Well, I'm not going to run as fast as uh, <laughs> <laughs> you guys might, but. Uh, <laughs> well, let, me ask you, let me ask you guys what everybody, I think, and, and what Glenn I know wants to. Are you guys afraid to say things on stage? And is that a new phenomenon? Do you feel that you can do your career's damage by saying the wrong thing? And I think maybe Shane, you, you go first because you, you did in some way have your career damaged. I got my career damaged from like a, a podcast where I think on stage it's pretty hard to, to, for anything you say to be misconstrued as your joke. Like clearly you're joking. You're trying to be funny. On a podcast sometimes it doesn't look like you're trying to be funny. And I, I get, like, when I got in trouble, which I don't know if any of you guys remember that, I got, whatever. And uh, it, it's tough to tell whether or not you're joking. I, I assure you I was trying to. I wasn't, I don't have a racist podcast. It's a comedy podcast, but, you know, I, I don't know. I think on stage you're fine, right? I've never had, I, like, sometimes people get upset, but it's like, all right, whatever. Either that was a bad set or fuck them. Has, yeah, any, has anybody been canceled for a joke? I would on say stage? no. 
Oh, but yeah, you're not a Michael comedian. Richards got yeah, canceled. Roll, Michael Richards. Go ahead, roll but that yeah. wasn't a joke. He just screamed right, your favorite but, word. Right, but like, <laughs> like whose favorite word? My favorite word. <laughs> <laughs> my favorite word. Could be. Oh. <laughs> so, but you, here, here's a question for the comics, though. If if audience, a members... woman was talking. <laughs> The Absolutely. one woman who is representing Judy. this panel. Okay. Yes. Um, the the thing you're referring to was a repeat of a song. Uh, I was trying. I was. Uh, um, you know, this is about taking things out of context. And I just want to say, Glenn warmed us Wait, up. Did she say the? Did you say the N word? No, I th- I did say the N word. Um, <laughs> this is really good. I didn't know. No, I did. I said I did say. Say it. No, say I it. didn't. I didn't say it. This I is said going it great. in repeating lyrics of a song. Oh. I said it repeating lyrics of a song. Okay. okay. Um, did you that- add it, or were those the actual lyrics? <laughs> <laughs> and sweet. Be honest. <laughs> can we let, can we Did let you Glenn, take some indulgences a little? Hold on, um, Shay. You should have never brought us here. Here's the thing. Can <laughs> I just... Can yeah, I, 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 Roland, Roland, go ahead, Roland. I have nothing to say. This is interesting. This is right. Right. Sorry, go ahead. Um, I just want to say that when you opened, you opened with these premises that you think that comedians sh- should be able to deal with on stage, correct? Right. And that's where you begin, and it's, it's cultivating a joke and making material, which we do in front of an audience. And we don't know where the line is until the audience tells us. And so you come with that premise. It's not funny. Nothing you said was funny. As you know, you got claps and no laughter. But it takes us a long time to take that idea, which, as Shane said, those ideas are all brilliant premises for jokes. But the process is like no other art form. No, no uh, artist paints a part of a mural and then brings an audience in and says, OK, what do you think? Should I move the sun over here? Should I put a house here? Stand-up comedy, it, the audience informs us and lets us know where the line is. And we don't know where the line is 99.9% of the time until we've crossed it. And George Carlin said, it's the job of the comedian to cross that line and make you glad that, that they did. So that's how I want to respond to that. <laughs> Laughs. So if I could, if I could, if I could say something, um, I, I think, I think sort of what what brings the non-comics here, and, and I think the idea behind this event was, you know, Glenn has been an economist in academia at various institutions for a, a, you know a rather long time now, and is in, as well as Roland and is interested in asking questions that are taboo in academia, but could easily be the premise of a joke that the same people canceling folks at colleges would laugh at if they were in a comedy club. And the, w- the observation to draw from that is when we're arguing with people about politics or about ideas, there are these cognitive roadblocks we have in our minds that prevents us from seeing a good point on the other side. It's like you're arguing with someone, you're mad, they're a Democrat, you're a Republican, or vice versa. They say something that actually makes a lot of sense, but it just hits a roadblock in your mind because they're from a different, they have different politics than you, or from, they're, they're from a different place than you, or they're speaking, using words that grate against you in a way, words that offend you. Whereas you can take that same exact idea and if it's the premise of a really well-crafted joke that's gone through that process, then it, it goes right around your roadblocks like, like TSA pre-check, and it, it, just, it just hits you, and you laugh. And, and laughter is involuntary. It's un, it, you can't be tampered with. It's unfakeable in a way that acknowledging someone's point in an intellectual conversation in an intellectual space is not. And I think that's, that's what is sort of the impetus for this idea. Nice. But right. Cla- clapping and Claps no laughter. And clapping. <laughs> I'm not funny, and I'm not. The, gonna but try the to other thing, <laughs> but you know, you also the premises you brought up. You know, comedy is a weapon. It is a weapon. Um, how how is it a weapon? It is. Uh, here here's how it is. Uh, 1934. Hitler, very funny guy. Um, laugh. Um, Hitler. Uh, 
passed this act called the Treachery Act in 1934, where you were not allowed to make fun of the Third Reich or him, <laughs> or you know, or you would be murdered. Um, and so, you know, it it the the fact is that he couldn't take it. Trump couldn't take the White House Correspondence Center. He forbade his staff to, to attend the White House Correspondence Center. You know, there's something very powerful about, and smart, we're all smart. Everyone on this fucking, every one of these I, I think, comedians is smart. I think that smart. makes those guys pusses. It doesn't make comedy a weapon. Right, it is you know a weapon. I mean? They can't handle it. They are pusses. That, right. Because comedy. The, the weird thing, though, is that Trump was funny. As politicians go, he was uh, one of the I, funnier ones. I didn't find him funny. He was funny. objectively he was funny. funny. Of course he's funny. Yeah. Yeah. Objectively <laughs> funny, How Jimmy. was he funny? Regardless of Every he time he it. speaks, you laugh. Yeah. <laughs> Literally the definition yeah. of funny. He was funny. He was funny I for know. a comedian. He was very, yes, he was. China. China, yes. And it's oh, not even a joke. China. It's just saying the word. He's funny. Let's just be on it. Let's agree on that, and then you can say maybe you didn't like the jokes, but it was funny. Yes, Pocahontas was also funny. Yes, you did. <laughs> Everything was funny. He but was he, hilarious. But he came from a place of hate, so I, can, I don't know. I hate how do, him. How, what right. are you talking about? Where, how Hate's did come funny, from, too. Wait, why did he come from a place of hate when he made jokes? <laughs> uh, I think he's a hateful person. I don't think he's a right, nice let's not, person. Let's not get stuck on but, the phone. Right. But that's it. I just don't like him. I think his, his intent, not his intent not is guy. not... But like, say, yes, say but, like an insult comic right. kind of secretly hates his audience, but he's hilarious and no one cares. Don Rickles. Don Rickles, people would leave his show, and if they didn't get picked on, they would feel that they... They were gypped, right. you know, yeah. which is a word Racist. we're not allowed to say. <laughs> <laughs> right. So you can't say gypped because of the gypsies. So they were real mud. But I'm just uh, saying. So he would he would never make it now because we have de- we have decided that that's not? not funny. He's he, funny. People still laugh at him. Uh, I think he's hilarious. Yeah, I think he'd make it now. I, I think, think yeah, I think he would too. Uh, I don't know. know. Not with. I, I have a I have a question for whoever would know the answer. Judy would know. How have audiences changed? So there used to be a kind of social norm to accept different points of view. Right. To just take it. Right. And that doesn't seem to be the social norm anymore. Right. Now the, the norm is that you shouldn't be saying that. Right. I think the, the what I've been doing stand-up for 40, I did my first set 40 years ago, um, before you guys were born. And um, and I, in those decades, okay, I mean, I remember coming here in the 80s, and we were so free. I mean, literally, it was, it, it was amazing, the, the work that went on stage. No one, everyone was there to do the art. Um, and as we, social media happened, and people started taking things out of context, when everyone started getting a trophy, you get a trophy for winning the race and breaking the record, and you get a trophy for smiling while he did it, that's when everything changed. It's, it's, the, it's the fact that everyone thinks their uh, opinion is valid, because now they all have a soapbox, and it's used to be you got offended at a joke and you moved on with your life. And now it's like you get offended by a joke and that person should never be able to perform again. Um, I think that uh, we are erasing history a lot um, or rewriting history or not acknowledging history. Stereotypes are based out of ancestry. We could say things, but as we evolved, things had different meanings. So I think material changed as the times changed, but I think social media and thank you to the Comedy Cellar for telling people they have to put their fucking phones away when they get in here. Um, they beca- have their phones, by the way. <laughs> but I remember this oh, thing. Careful, Judy. I Wait, this time you have your phones? Up, Judy. Cameras, too. Yeah, yeah. By the way, Judy, when, when I was mansplaining you before, I was going to ask you that question. How, when you were, you know, other than Shane Gillis, it, it, is, it is difficult to think of examples off the top of my head of comics getting fired or getting canceled for doing bits on stage stage, Mm. but how different do you think that would be if anyone could film any joke with their phones, if places like this didn't have a no phone policy and people were putting stuff Well, I think that's, I think, I think a lot of people would be extra careful. I mean, I I do. I I, I don't care anymore because, please. But, uh, is 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 this a good, like, thumbnail illustration of what's changed? In the 90s, the phrase politically incorrect was a great marketing tool if you wanted to capture liberal America. Right. 
Now that would be the kiss of death. Right. Liberal America doesn't want a show called Politically Incorrect. Right. Mm. And there was a very successful show, Politically Incorrect. Right. But, but who, was, who was that marketed that to? That was marketed to, to the liberals. That was marketed right. to, oh, we're going to talk about the stuff that no one wants to talk. We're going to talk about gay people. We're going to talk about people of color. We're going to talk about immigrants. We're going to talk about all this stuff. Um, and now I think both the right and the left are losing this battle. And it, it really kind of sucks. It, Rick, it, you got yeah. something? Hmm? You got something you want to say? Oh, you just bring me a... I'd like to begin with a land acknowledgement. <laughs> um, we are on a, uh, the land originally occupied by the uh, Lenape people, who, uh, so, uh, they were a tribe that occupied Manhattan, and then they sold it to a Jewish tribe, <laughs> the Fakakta people. <laughs> My pronouns... <laughs> Are he, him, wait, what? Thank you. That was helpful. <laughs> Definitely move the conversation. <laughs> no, okay. I, can I add something to this? Uh, I think, I don't know if people have gotten, people want to be good people, right? Which means sometimes you get dumber because you want to be a good person. You just want to follow whatever people tell you is the good thing to do, so you do it. So now I think there's an idea out there where if you, if you joke about something, people would think that means you endorse that thing. You know what I mean? Like, Bill Cosby wasn't known for rape jokes. <laughs> he never joked about them, but he fucking loved rape. You know what I mean? So just because you talk about a shitty thing in the world, yeah. it doesn't mean you endorse that thing. Yeah. It just means it's out there. We got to talk about it because the only way we have is fucking comedy. This you know what true. I mean? This is no. You're making a great. Like we shouldn't even be on the stage together. Like you guys and us should never talk. Why is that? Because you guys say things that are true. And we say things that are funny. And when those things bleed into one another, the stakes get too high. Like you asking about like black IQ, yeah. now you're implying the joke that Shane or I'm going to make is how I actually feel about black IQ. I'm just going to say the funniest one. Right. And that's right. often wrong. You know what I mean? Yes. I do. So if you want to talk about me too shit, the funniest joke is wrong. Right? Like what we, is, but we are social joke? scientists. The so funniest we're wrong joke. The, time too. the funniest joke about the Me Too is that the Me Too movement stopped during the pandemic when women started making banana bread. <laughs> I don't think that's the funniest. And they realized what they yeah, really I, wanted. I don't think that's funny. <laughs> which is to stay at home all fucking day in the kitchen and clean. <laughs> they were forced to stay right, inside and they that's loved funny. it. Thank you. That is funny. That's to let me tag that it. That is funny. That no, is funny. But that's not agree. right, that's right? But, but you're saying, Andrew, yeah. you are... It really are, does sound I, like you believe that. Though. Right. I know, <laughs> I have conviction. I have conviction. That's why it's dangerous, because but, he but, believes but, it. My wife has never been happier. Yeah. <laughs> I think TJ and Andrew are saying that it's about intent. What is the intention? And when you take intention out of the equation, you're done. And it's like... And that's what the audience does. That's what no one was saying. The audience takes intent. Doesn't, you know, when you, if you murder someone and you go on trial for homicide, your, your um, sentence is based on intent. What were you thinking? Did you mean to do it? And yet a comic doesn't get the same consideration. No and, one does. Right. No one does. That, is, that has nothing to do with comedy, right? But it, like I think it has anywhere. everything to do with comedy. Not, not just in comedy. That's a problem. Right. right. I think it's a problem with general. everything. Yeah. But I'm saying, you're saying, you know, some what the question about, you know, the, has the audience changed? Yeah, the audience now doesn't doesn't care, care about the comedian's intent. They only care about how they fucking feel about the joke. Now, and that's the end of it. Well, let me ask you a question about the intent thing. How much of it is the appearance that intent doesn't matter because corporations tend to buckle, and how much of it is the fact that people really, everyday people really dismiss things if the intent is in there. So like Joe Rogan, I, I'm curious to know how you guys felt about the whole Joe Rogan thing, but Spotify didn't buckle, mm. and it kind of just went away. Yeah. Uh, what, 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 what network is the view on, ABC? 
ABC, yeah. ABC, ABC kind of buckled with Whoopi Goldberg, I think, to their discredit. And now that's kind of stuck to her. Where I, I thought they shouldn't have done anything about Whoopi Goldberg. They should have said, let her say what she wants. It's the view. If she, if, if she learns something and wants to take it back, she's welcome to. If she stands by it, she stands by it. What did, what did Whoopi say? She said that, that the Holocaust, Holocaust was wasn't about race. The Holocaust yeah, it was a white, just a white people problem, yeah. so she's yeah. staying out of it. Yeah. <laughs> Which but, is pretty funny. <laughs> yeah. Just hilarious. Isn't that what everybody's saying about Russia, Ukraine now? Yeah. Pretty much. But, and also, she did everybody a favor by bringing it up because a lot of people think that that's an idea. That's right. Been it was a learning up. experience. I mean, they brought yeah. they brought um, the head. The head of um, the Anti-Defamation League. But they paraded yeah. her out there. Jonathan she did the hostage video. She apologized. Yeah. Right. She did. She, and she suspended Actually, for two weeks. Is she, she reinstated? Is she back on? Oh, She's yeah. back on. She had, They okay. took her off for two weeks. She kind of gotcha. fucking, she went on Colbert and kind of was like, Nah, she doubled I, down. I kind yeah. of agree with everything I said earlier. Right. <laughs> Colbert really? had to be and like, oh, well, how about that? <laughs> All right. <laughs> Yeah, it was great. I'd, I'd very much like to hear what Glenn's take on the whole Joe Rogan thing was. And by the way, it wasn't just that he said the N-word, but he, he made a comparison to Planet of the Apes, which is exactly, basically what Roseanne Barr got fired for, right? Yeah, the Planet of the Apes thing was a little problematic, I think. Problematic? <laughs> it was, yeah, it was a problem. Uh, I mean, you know, you think apes, you see a bunch of black guys standing around, you think apes, you know, that's a little bit problematic. I mean... I don't think it should be, you know, a cancelable offense, but I think an apology might be in order, and I think he did uh, issue one, so it's all good. Likewise with uh, Whoopi Goldberg, which I took to be more ignorance than malice. Yeah. I mean, she just didn't understand that Hitler was about race in his own way, just like, you know, we... <laughs> so, um, you know, uh, that's what I think. But I, I want to get rolling into the conversation because he's one of the reasons that I'm here. When I learned that his research lab had a, a, a facility in it where he could show old tapes of Richard Pryor, uh, Dave Chappelle doing comedy routines so that the graduate students and research assistants would be stimulated to ask the right questions about social inequality, I thought, huh, comedy's got a bigger reach than I ever thought it could have. I'm just a comedy groupie. I mean, I think that the best social scientists in the world are on uh, stages every night. <laughs> and if you want to understand what a community is feeling, you should come to a comedy club, not come to Harvard's economics department. And so um, that, that's, yeah. probably, that's probably not so surprising. But yeah, I, I, I showed those things because there's real things in there to actually test with data, uh, Glenn. You know, when, when Richard Pryor talks about police brutality, yep. he then says, you know, after a policeman beats you up, the only thing you want to do is go home and beat your kids. So I thought, hmm, we can test that. That's pretty interesting. <laughs> um, and there's a bunch of things like that, right? Chris Rock, Dave, oh, Dave Chappelle, lots of folks are dealing with way more interesting things on race than, frankly, uh, our, our colleagues in, in these elite <coughs> institutions are do, dealing with. Do you know that when George Floyd was murdered, the following week, the number seven download on Spotify was that exact bit from Richard Pryor? Mm. I didn't know that. Forty something years old. That Interesting. bit. Yeah. Interesting. The Jews were tracking the numbers. <laughs> <laughs> How can I profit off of this? <laughs> That's a good joke. You know what? Who gets hurt with that joke? Nobody gets hurt. I feel hurt. <laughs> you do? Fuck no. <laughs> well, I think the truth is like they're. they're if this crowd were large enough, there were, eventually there would be at least one person in the crowd that actually really was hurt by that joke. And that's true, I think that's true of even the best jokes. So like there's this, this, this idea that we basically have to, comics at least, have to adapt to the most thin-skinned person in the room. What does it mean no, to be no, hurt don't. by a joke? Well, I, I think you know it when you feel it. I mean, I felt this, it's like a joke, it wasn't funny to you, it, it, it's a gut feeling. Yeah, I've 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 had I've I look, one time I was dating this girl, she had an abortion. <laughs> Don't worry, we broke up. And uh <laughs> anyway, there was a we went she and I went to a club together and the comic that was on stage was doing bad abortion jokes and I was sitting with her like 
<laughs> you know what I mean? Like I was, I've been offended, but right. you know, but I'm not a pussy. I shut the fuck up about it. I wasn't gonna be like, hey, cut it out. I knew that they it was a joke. They did cut it out. Yeah. <laughs> See, that's a good joke. That's a great joke. That's a good joke. That's not how they do it. They don't cut it out. It was in, yeah. it was in rural Pennsylvania. They suck it out. What the fuck they kind of abortion? Suck it out. True. Suck that would have okay. been funny. Like, hey, you better scoop it off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> suck it out right now. <laughs> but yeah, no, I've been. There. I understand with one. But, I, but yeah, you gotta be quiet if you're the person that's like. Hmm. Yeah, but the question is, how hurt? If you get hurt by a joke, like, uh, you know, if uh, somebody does a joke about your grandmother dying, and your grandmother just happened to die right. the day before, yeah. well, you, how absurd for you to think that comedian should have known that my grandmother died. Of course, and of course. That, ta- that was in poor taste, and I'll never patronize that comedy club again. Yeah. But now, and that's their right, if they would say, I'm not going to patronize that comedy club or see that comedian again. But now it's like, and I'm going to get everybody I know to make sure that, that person has never no friends, works again. Because he told a joke that hurt my feelings no. that only I knew about at the time. Yeah, That's where the problem is. Yeah. It's, it's right, that's so social media, yeah. too. It's not, it's not so much the fact that you get, uh, that you get yourself in, in trouble. It's that it's, it's like, who else can I get to come along and hate that guy with me? Yeah. You know, yeah. That, that's what it's become. You know, my mother used to say, she'd hear a joke, she'd go, oh, that's in poor taste. Remember, do you remember that phrase? Poor yeah. taste. Yeah. And that was the end of it. Fuck that her. Don Rickles, poor taste. Well, that's what I said. Fuck you, Mom. You what motherfucker. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. He just up. called the guy a hockey puck. What, yeah. Who got her with that? No, but it's true. And people would get on with their lives. But now there's an agenda. Oh, you said something that hurts me. Now I must get my army together and make sure that person or that establishment goes out of business. And that, I, I think, it, is I think there's part of that. I think... Yeah. I think the the trickiest thing is and um, is the audience feeling discomfort laughing at things that they do believe are funny. I think that's the biggest difference. I'm not really worried. And again, I operate maybe a little bit out of like a system, so it's a little bit maybe different for me. Like I, I go to like a show of mine, and people are there to hear the type of jokes that I do. They're not they're not waiting to be canceled or whatever it is, mm-hmm. but. Sometimes if I perform here, for example, I'll see people in the crowd, they want to laugh, but they're worried that yeah. they could be a pariah if they do. Mm-hmm. And that is the heartbreaking thing because they're actually being a good person. They're going, if I laugh at this, could the trans person in the audience feel bad? Could the gay person in the audience feel oh, bad? Fuck that. Could the woman in the audience feel bad? No, like, there's part of me that wants to go, oh, fuck them, but then there's other part of me that's like, you're kind of being a good person. Like, I can't be angry at you that you're a good person. I'm kind of angry that we're coddling each other so much and it's almost like we're infantilizing people right as if the trans person can't take a joke as if the gay person can't take a joke so but it's it, yeah that's just a function of just not I, having I a diverse to... friend group that's really what that is but and i'm not saying that for class but for me as a comic that is the greatest discomfort looking in your eyes and then seeing you hold back a right. laugh because the environment i talked i talked talk to gilbert uh, godfrey about this exact thing and he said what happens now, and I think everyone on the panel who's a comic can agree, is that you invo- you know, laughter's involuntary. So you laugh, you're like, oh, that's fun, and then they go like this. <gasps> yeah. That is what happens now. It's like, ah, oh, right, I'm not supposed to laugh at that, and that sucks. That yeah. I think sucks 150 percent. Yeah. So that that is unfortunate. It's but what, not, why yeah. did that come from? Who decided what people are supposed to laugh at and not laugh at? Where is where is that from? What part of the culture decided that? I guess we're reacting to public scrutiny. So the most scrutinized ideas or jokes or opinions are going to make us feel uncomfortable laughing up. And again, it's our job as comedians to like make the environment silly enough where we can laugh at these things. Right. That's my failure. Like If I see you holding back a laugh, even if I think you should laugh at it, and if you were at one of my shows, you would be as you feel comfortable enough. The reason I'm here is because I want to make the person who doesn't even know me feel comfortable enough laughing. Mm-hmm. And that's on me. i got to find a way to make it sillier, make yeah. it more absurd, or whatever the fuck it is. But I just wish that they felt free enough to laugh. But that's on them. That's not on you. Yeah, but it's, it's a, if, we're t- if we're having like a greater cultural discussion, which I, whatever, I, I just want to fucking make people laugh. But you love it, dude. I, I, eh, fuck you, Shane. <laughs> hey, fuck you, man. Oh, okay, you guys. Okay, I want to hear you what you think about jerk. this. Yes. The, 
to me, the strongest argument against the comic going over the line and introducing stuff that we're not supposed to say is that the non-comic people out there will feel empowered to say the thing that we're not supposed to say when the comic makes us laugh by saying that thing. Oh, that's, that's absolute bullshit. 100%. Yeah, it makes okay. no sense. I don't know who came up. Okay, so there's this thing in comedy that no comedians came up with that term. I think it's a comedy journalist. Like punching up versus punching down. <laughs> That's not a thing that none of us ever think about. But somehow, somewhere, somebody decided that you punch up if you joke about the people society has decided. Those are the privileged people. You can make fun of them. And that this whole group below them that's like the marginalized. And you can't joke about them because that's punching down. And that's not true. You, you punch where you think it's funny. That's all it is. Why, where do we have this thing punching up and punching down? But it's also a comedian. You see the world through the comedian's eyes. Like a joke is a buildup of tension and then a release. And, it, and you know, it, you really do. I, I'm a gay. I'm a lesbian. Um, <laughs> I'm a, a parent. Prove it. Prove it. <laughs> prove it. <laughs> Come here, Liz. Let's go. Um, oh, now it's but, interesting. I didn't know about Liz. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, I, 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 um, I transform them. I transform. No, but I, when I came out, I came out in the mid '90s a, a, as a gay parent. I was, ta- I had kids, and I just started talking about my family. And I was like, I have to talk about family. Everyone talks about that, you know, like your parent. There's so much material, and it definitely changed the way people would come up to me after a show and say, oh, I, I, first of all, people would forget that I was gay because I was talking about the same shit that they, other parents go through. And then I've had people come up to me thanking me. I had a military guy from Houston say, oh, I see why you guys want to get married now. Like, comedy is powerful if you um, are talking about, and it's the most palatable way to talk about something subversive. A hundred percent, because you trick them. They're laughing, but they're learning. They're thinking, you know, and yeah. that's the power of comedy. Can I invite another perspective here? We have a, a woman who works here. She, she's trans. She worked Work. with me for more than 30 years. Uh, long, oh, shit, long, man. Long before What's she was up? trans. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, but she's also <laughs> been around comedy all this time, and, I, and, and she's quite intelligent. And I'm wondering if you have any, go that far. <laughs> an introspective. And I'm she's now Amy Schneider. I, want, oh, okay. I wonder if you have anything to, 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 to like, how, how does it make when you When did you fe- transition? Uh, you know, it's what happens during COVID. I didn't know if you know that that was a side effect. <laughs> It too much banana with, bread. Too I much remember you before. Bread. Yes, you yes. do. So you have a picture with my daughter. I do. Yeah, yes. And you're good at dancing. You could salsa. I, and stuff. I'm really good at dancing now. Now she's wow. even better at dancing. Okay, well done, bro. Well, I mean, well, sorry, but Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I'm interested to know how you feel about it when you when people are telling jokes uh, about the trans community uh, and 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 what perspective you have from it when there was a time you probably would have laughed at those jokes and now you find yourself maybe the butt of those jokes for la- lack of a better term. All right, so um, I am going to go out on a limb. It's not a very popular. Um, opinion within my community, but I do believe that it is important for comedians to make jokes about the transgender community. And the reason is, is because every time you talk about it, you normalize our existence. You start the conversation with one caveat, that whatever you say, have it be based in truth. Yeah. Yep. So so long as it's true, then it's funny. If it's yeah. not true, yeah, the then truth it becomes is elusive. Mean. You know, well, <laughs> it's something that we argue. But I mean, it's so long as it's not really mean spirited. I think the shorthand way of saying is, you know, have it be based in truth. Um, and uh, you know, so I am not offended, and I, I would say that there's a large portion of my community which are. Um, we're usually kind of quiet. We kind of, well, for reals, we, we kind of dip into the background. We're really good at trying to be on the DL. You know, we're trying to hide. We're trying not to make ourselves too well known. Um, but m- there's many of us who are hardworking, productive members of society, worthy of inclusion, and we find the jokes funny. Mm. You know, we're not out there protesting against, um, like, the Dave Chappelle's. And I, I do, like, I watched the Dave Chappelle episode three times, two times taking notes. And I didn't find anything that he said that was mean-spirited. I found things I disagreed with, but he has a right to offend me. 
Mm. Yeah. Okay, so she is she making a crucial distinction here that's kind of not handled. There's a big difference between yeah. being mean spirited and making a legitimate point. Right. And I like I, I have a lot of tolerance for somebody making a point, even about things that really matter like that that are emotional to me. If I know they're just they're making a point, I feel the obligation to give them a lot of latitude. If they're mean, I don't feel the obligation to give them any room at all. So is that it, audiences are probably can pretty I ask similar you, to can that. Can I ask you a question actually sure. on that whole thing? Because sure. my my feeling about the Chappelle thing is it, it was just like um, people they didn't have the same knowledge base. That's kind of what I understand. It's like transphobia's definition for Chappelle and transphobia's definition for the trans community were different. And there wasn't a conversation to get on the same page. So I think Chappelle was going like, transphobia is what racism would be. So you hate me, therefore that's transphobia. I don't hate you guys, it's not transphobia. And then the trans community was like, if you don't think I'm really a woman, that's transphobia. Yeah. Is that? So the, I lost some friends because of my stance on how I felt that mm. Dave Chappelle is, is within his right to say what he did. There is part of our community that feels like you can't say anything. If you say anything remotely um, uh, 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 offensive towards the trans community, immediately you're put in that block, right. in that box, you're, you're shut out, you're canceled, you're whatever. We're going to march because any word, any negative word by anybody you know, would mark you as being transphobic. What I interpreted as um, uh, uh, Chappelle saying is that I, you know, I don't, in my heart of hearts, I don't live like you live. I don't, I, I can't understand it. Mm. But I do support you 100%, mm -hmm. you know, hence his friend out there in San Francisco, the, the comedian. So he, and, and caveat, I've known Chappelle for also for a very long time, yeah. and I know that he is not transphobic. Mm. He says jokes to be funny because he's a comedian. That's what he does, you know? And if he's not, and actually in some ways, thank God, because we are having this conversation right. about whether or not it's funny or not, and do we have th thick enough skins, and if there's any younger LGBT out there, don't have such thin skins. <laughs> like, laugh yeah, at I, yourself. I, I agree with you. Uh, uh, the younger LGBTQ, uh, plus every other fucking bowel. Um, there, there is, uh, it, you know, it's like because of our experience, I think because we went through the AIDS crisis, because we joke about things, because we've had this experience, uh, and it's now verboten. I remember I was playing tennis, and... Um, this uh, I was I play doubles tennis because I can't, I can't move anyway. But I th I was in Provincetown, uh, gay gay gay, oh, and then um, <laughs> hello, and it was carnival, which is like the carnival oh in New Orleans. Okay, and the theme was the '80s, and I'm playing doubles tennis, and there's a guy there. He's about my age. We're we're playing, and uh, we're on a break, and he's like, "Well, what are you going to dress up as for the carnival?" And he said, "Oh, I'm going to go as Madonna," and I said, "Oh, I'm going as." one T cell, okay? <laughs> All right. It's a phenomenal joke. So he laughed his ass off because, you know, we had been through this shit together. He told a friend of his who's like 26 and they were appalled. Oh my God, how could she say that? Okay, so. Mm, that's funny. <laughs> yeah. Glenn, we're, we're getting close to the time. We're going to take audience questions. I know you've, you've thought very deeply about this issue and, and things related to it. Maybe you want to have, have a chance to share with you, share with us uh, the things you've been thinking about before we turn it over to the audience. Well, this has been a wonderful experience, I'll say that much. I mean, <laughs> listening to these comedians talk about comedy. I want to talk a little bit about the N-word. Nigger. <laughs> Which I can say because this is my nigger. <laughs> I'm now, I've known this young man since he was, you know. Since I was a nigger. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah. No, 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 no. <laughs> what I mean is circling back to my point about political correctness being a way of keeping the thing from getting out of the box, out of the comedy box and into the world. This monster, this monster of racism, this monster that we, you know, and, and we've got 
guardrails, we've got, you know, stay in your lane kind of markers. And when you let a few people get across the line in the name of comedy, you open up the door to something that could be, you know, really very ugly. I don't know how many Hitler jokes we would want to tell in 1941. You know what I mean? The producers, that wasn't Chaplin that was doing a thing. Oh, sorry. He was doing a yeah. mustache, yeah. He was what? Yeah. That's just the mustache. So, I, mean, I don't have a grand intellectual closure on the conversation. I, I have a sense, though, that there's a lot of stuff to learn from comics talking with journalists, talking with philosophers about our society. So, you know, that, that's what I would say, no. Well, can I just, just say that, that you're talking about, about Hitler, about Hitler, um, there was, Charlie Chaplin did a film called The Great Dictator, yeah. which was a satire, which involved Hitler, or Hitler as type, in funny situations to ridicule him. We can... Right. We, satire and comedy is a, that's the powerful tool. We can take something, do something, uh, take a subject, and make it so absurd that people go, that's right, it's not as scary as we think it is, or it's not as important as we think, or, or this is something we should pay attention to. Uh, uh, so humor and satire has been used in situations uh, for difficult subjects forever. Right. So that's, right. that's a I tool mean, we use. It, you, they did the... Uh, uh, first of all, All in the Family would never go, get on the air now on a network. What the, a shame. Uh, um, Maud uh, had an abortion uh, on one of her episodes, never get on the air now. And when they did the live episode of the Jeffersons, they, they censored it. Um, and it, it's... It, times have really, this is really, really changed. That the discourse, that there's no dis. I think that what what you were saying is that it does create discourse. This this comedy, and when you talk about real things, people start actually talking about that. Oh, that joke was funny. You know, I was thinking, blah blah blah. And when we all watch the same TV show at the same time, whatever happened on that show, whatever issue they were talking about, uh, everyone talked about it that next morning. It created discourse, and there's no discourse now. There's just arguing. Um, no, that hurt my feelings, so it's wrong. And that's, that's what I think is really sad. Yeah, I, I think one of the things that's happened is a lot of people have forgotten that Comedy by nature is transgressive. Yeah. It's not supposed to be right. It's actually very wrong. You're supposed to look at the shitty stuff in your right. life and laugh about it. And that doesn't mean you have the power to change it, but you cope with it right. by laughing about it. So I think now there's this idea that, oh, you shouldn't talk about this as if that's going to make it go away. It's going to make it worse. Exactly. But people think if you joke about something, then you empower other people to not do this thing. Or do, Like Richard Pryor joked about police brutality in the 70s. Right. And I guess, is that a thing of the past? It's still no, fucking it's here. Still so here. it doesn't matter if you joke about it. You're just joking to cope with it. You're not joking to change the fucking world. Who work in a fucking nightclub for drunks? What are we talking about? <laughs> exactly. It's not this highfalutin bullshit. It's right. you know? easy to teach it. <laughs> Personally, like, from not my... You guys. You're pretty. <laughs> yeah, you guys seem <laughs> sober. And uh, I don't know. From my from my perspective, I hope more comedians actually give a fuck and start like worrying about the crowd because it just makes me funnier. Because <laughs> I literally, I hope every comedian is like, well, maybe I shouldn't say that. It's like, great, I'll make a million dollars. I also want to say again because I really think it's true that it's it's not. I bet you it's not audiences that have changed that much. It's a few people on Twitter and corporate America that's intimidated by them. Yes. So you got fired from SNL. I don't think the audience would have given a shit if you had been hired on SNL. No. It's just right. an NBC with it's a chicken thing. Yeah. because those people on Twitter and the people yeah. they go to cocktail parties or whatever it is. It's like Forty it's, people tweeted. That's right. And that's it's, all it takes. It's not a reflection yeah. of any big sea change of intolerance on the, the audience couldn't stand. And that's a huge point. That's why Rogan is still perfectly in... Well, Rogan, he, I'm sorry to cut you off, but no, no, like, guys like Rogan and Chappelle, like, I didn't have anything before that. So, like, there was no way to point back and be like, no, he's actually funny. 
He was joking. Literally, the only thing the entire world saw was a clip of me sitting there saying wild shit. Yeah. <laughs> so that was a pretty easy Prove cancel. Yeah. <laughs> I'll do it, dude. Fuck it. <laughs> but yeah, I, I yeah. somehow suspect that Rogan had some sort of contractual uh, scenario because this couldn't have been uncontemplated that he would say something. He must have had some contractual protection in this regard. I don't know that, but it just seems if I was his lawyer. I, think I mean, you're not going to put $100 million for somebody then let them yeah. go because of Twitter. Who gives a fuck? Yeah, and then they would have they would have lost double. Yeah, exactly. All of his followers would have been like, all right, fuck it, fuck I'll delete, Spotify. I'll delete yeah. Spotify right now. Yeah, uh, fuck it. I, I mean, that's the only. It, it sucks to have to be that end of the spectrum where you're like, yeah, well, then we'll boycott this company also. But fuck it. <laughs> if fight, corporate fight America, fire, would, if I guess. corporate America yeah. would have a backbone, I think a lot of this problem would disappear. Yep. Yeah, I agree. I, I think it's time for what's that? Oh, Sam J. Come on, Sam. Bring this monster up. <laughs> <laughs> this is Sam J. Writer on SNL. She has her own what's show. What's up, baby? Oh, sexy. Up, you get the last Sorry. word, Sam, and then we're going to get questions word. from the audience. My last word is cancel Shane Gillis. <laughs> Please. It helps. <laughs> what last word in what regard? I don't you can say whatever you want to say about this topic. About cancel culture. Are you afraid of getting canceled? Am I afraid of getting canceled? Sometimes. I mean, I think there's, if you do anything now in the public light, there's this kind of inherent fear. Use this, use this All right. I think some in this in this world that doesn't seem to understand nuance anymore. I think there's an inherent fear of people running with something and fucking your life up. And I think there, as an artist, it's super scary because a part of your job is vulnerability and just to be rawly honest in your mistakes and in your victories. And to do that, you have to say where you went wrong. And when we're not entertaining the gray, and we're not entertaining the nuance, and there's just these very hard lines drawn in the sand of what is and isn't okay, and no one's equating life and experience and baggage and emotional shit and everything else that plays into a right and a wrong, as an artist, you become afraid to create art. And in that, we'll be stilted as a society because the conversations won't move and be pushed in the necessary way. And so, I, yeah, is it a fear? A little bit. But then there's this other side of me that's like, I don't know, the masses have always been fucking stupid. <laughs> not, not for nothing, you know? I think individually people are reasonable and in groups people are fucking idiots. Yeah. yeah. And if you bend <laughs> to the will of the mob, then you're always bending. And the other responsibility of artists is to say fuck the mob. And sometimes when you say fuck the mob, the mob persecutes you. <laughs> they burn you at the stake. They fucking take away your shit. They try to deny you the right to do the thing you love to do because the mob also usually is a group of people who hasn't tapped into their own potential yet. Mm. and hasn't tapped into their own truth <laughs> and hasn't tapped into their own fucking access to happiness. Break it down. So they don't know how to process mm -hmm. seeing a free motherfucker. Wow. Because <laughs> they're mm -hmm. not free yet. Glenn, are you Sam's older Pokemon? <laughs> <laughs> Does Sam evolve into Glenn? How, how long have you been sitting on that one? I've been wait, I was waiting that whole speech. I was like, how do I word this correctly? <laughs> call me wrong if you must, but don't you ever call me humorless. <laughs> yeah, so I don't know. It's just this weird dance, right? So, yeah, there's a fear, but then my need as an artist to say what I want supersedes the fear. And I'm also like, I don't know if they cancel me and I got to take whatever little money I got and live in the woods. I'm fine with that. <laughs> I did it. I had a run. I got to say it. And a little bit, if you're a true artist, that has to be enough. Yes. You can't be like, well, I need the millions and I need the attention. Because then you're starting to play in some other spaces that aren't necessarily about art. Mm -hmm. But it's like, yo, if this is my last painting, 
I got to paint the way I fucking wanted, bro. Yeah. And I'm willing to pack up my shit and go paint fucking trees in the woods. <laughs> and maybe when I'm dead and in the ground 20 years later, there'll be some new generation that comes around and goes, you were fucking dumb for that, man. Like, here was a person just trying to do it correct, you know? I just think that's the dance the entire time. And the internet and Twitter and all these things that give, like, dumb people access to talk a lot. <laughs> they don't help. You know? If anything, that's, like, the worst part of it is, like, there's all these platforms for dumb niggas. <laughs> a time where you were dumb, you had to like have the balls to be dumb in someone's face. You know what I mean? Like, you had to go to a bar and be like, I'm gonna say something I think is right. And then, <laughs> and then everyone be like, shut your dumb ass up. And you be like, all right, I'm fucking dumb. <laughs> and you had to take like whatever that persecution was. But now dumb niggas get to tie some, and if it's too dumb, they delete it. They're like, oh, I didn't even say it. And it's like, ah. That's not helpful. <laughs> uh, Sam J, everybody. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's right. Yeah. All right, unless anybody here has some, something else they want to say, I think we take questions from the audience. No? Who's going to come down? Somebody want to man the mic, maybe? Uh, Me? I'll do it. I'll do, I'll do questions from the audience. Yeah, so there's a cordless mic there. You're going to... Um, let, me, let me, this one, right? Yeah, yeah. Yo, yo. All right. Sam's going to fuck you up, lady. Put your hand down. Please. <laughs> Who wants My white it? queen. No, put I your want, hand down. I want her. I want her. Yeah, pick the hot chicks first, Sam. Come here. Sam. Come, here. come here. My Disney princess. What do you, yeah, you got to say? Sam. <laughs> She's mine. Um, <laughs> and I'll, I wanted to thank you guys for your insight and also for being very courageous because I think courage is a rare thing these days. I wanted to ask, um, I'm nervous because I have a show coming up and the premise is satirical. And I'm worried it'll be taken out of context and people won't get irony. What advice would you guys give to somebody in my position? What's the show? The show is called the war on drugs is going great. When is that? <laughs> Let me get in there. <laughs> no, I'm the last one. I, I say, who fucking cares what they think? Just do your fucking show. Very articulate, wasn't that? <laughs> I think that Just, you know. Because you said a lot of people don't know that you're tending to be funny. Just put it on the program, a satirical comedy, and then they go, "Oh, okay, it's that's how she means it." You would think. You would think. Like, because my thing's called a comedy podcast, <laughs> <laughs> and most of the time, if I'm being racist or sexist or transphobic, it's clearly satire and irony. But sometimes people don't think that. So, I don't know. Do your best. <laughs> You don't have any other jobs. What's your real job? Uh, communication. So. You're fucked. You can't do comedy. <laughs> you can't do comedy. Why are you trying to do comedy? Are you, you going to go down in the audience and, and uh, get the mic out? Me? Yeah. If you, I, mean, I didn't know we were done. With, I didn't want to. Oh. Listen, you don't interrupt ladies these days, baby. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You got to rock out. That I don't want to. No, that's a couple of right there. The I don't want to get her away. Blah, 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 blah. Nah, you're behind her, so you got to wait. Right just there. Just by nature. Sam. <laughs> where, the, where that do you want? woman with the glasses and the dark hair, Let's lift her hand up first. Yes. <laughs> yes. Hey, uh. Hello? Okay. So. Okay. Just project. We can hear Sound you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I can yell. As, as, that doesn't work. Really so, maybe uh, hand her your mic over there. In, in, in spirit of the sound, I'm, T I'm partially Jewish, so I can yell. TJ, hand her your, your mic, TJ, because we want to make sure it's recorded. All right. Well, <laughs> uh -oh. um, so, first of all, in terms of the power of comedy to, to really like change people's minds, I've really changed my mind tonight. I really believe that trans women are women based on their ability to completely take over a conversation and shut up men. <laughs> but... Um, my, my question is related to that, which is to say, there seems like there's a bit of a contradiction. You want to say that comedy has the power to challenge power, and then you want to say that it's just jokes. And I, I think there is a little, and maybe contradiction is too strong, there's, there's a tension there that I think maybe you guys could address. Ooh. It's just jokes. <laughs> 
Stop trying to make it more than that. It's just jokes. It's up to intellectuals and journalists to write all these think pieces and make it seem better than that. We're just trying to be funny. And if you're out here trying to do more than be funny, you're probably not that funny. Because if you could just make the audiences laugh, that's what the fuck you would do. That's just what it is. I know every unfunny motherfucker got a great point. <laughs> Right, and the funny people sometimes got great points, and then sometimes they talk about shit. Right, they talk about dick joke. It is what it is. Just be funny. Those are that, at least for me. I don't want the stakes. You're not trying to make points. No. Can I ask you a follow-up question, no. Andrew? No. And if I am, that's up to right. you guys. Yeah. Can I ask you a follow-up question? Do you know if I'm up here going, I'm trying to change the world? Cancel me, bro. <laughs> Cancel me. If I'm out here going, I just make jokes, that's all I do, let me be Batman, bro. So I think Andrew, that... Uh, and, Andrew, what, when, when Roland says that you know, he was running the, the top economics lab at Harvard, responsible for some of the most important research, and he shows his, 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 his assistants, Richard Pryor mm -hmm. and Eddie Murphy, to get them think, how do you explain that? I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm just provoking you to like. The students are dorks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So what is it? We've never heard anything you teach real losers, in their bro. lives. That nigga is Hamilton. Yeah. Yeah. He's just like, yeah. you, uh, you want me to make learning cool? <laughs> and watch this guy say nigga a bunch and then explain racism. I mean, <laughs> oh, it's a little bit of what. Hamilton. <laughs> It's a split of the diff, I think. It's up am to I, yeah. Am I saying things that can probably challenge? And am I saying some things intentionally to challenge? Yes. But should you live and die by me? I'm drunk. No. Thank <laughs> you. Go get a book. Yes. Go do some follow-up research. Yes. Pretty Read much. a nigga who's like, this is his life to do this. Yeah. I showed up on a Saturday night, drunk as shit, yelled at a cab driver, and now like, I got a lot of thoughts on race. And that's this job. Exactly. Yo, exactly. We, have, we make movies. Like It's some Pixar shit. Okay? If you have a greater point that you can extrapolate from it, great. Okay? If it's just about the five emotions that are inside your body. <laughs> don't. Yeah, Great it's, too. Like, it's a thing of like, don't, if I say it, don't take it as religion. If I say it, don't go, well, you said this, and then you have to think about what this, this, and this. Because there's a lot of people saying a lot about that topic. I might be saying a very ignorant thing about trans people. Sure. I'm a dumb comic who drinks a lot. There's so many books from smart people. Mm. There's so many conversations from people who this is their life's work. This is what they care about, and this is what they do. So if you hang your hat, good or bad, on me, you're fucking up. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, yes. Also, one thing I, I mean, this might be off topic, because currently I'm drunk. And uh, <laughs> I don't know, if I'm performing in New York City when it comes to, like, fighting power, who do you think New York, I mean, New York's just the most liberal place on earth. If I'm going to be up here confronting an audience, I'm going to be saying something like, Trump's funny. Oh, yeah. Shit like that. And that's fun, dude. That's fun to do. It's fun yeah. to make a whole audience sit there and be like, yeah, he's funny. Yes. That's the, yeah. that's that's the most the fun. Game. You know what sucks is coming up here and being like, women's rights matter. <laughs> <laughs> that shit sucks. Yeah, it's, it's so fun. And there's, bitches yeah. are dumb. Yeah. <laughs> it's so much, yeah. It's way more fun to come up here and be like, you know who's dumb as hell? Women. <laughs> See how funny that was? Yeah, it'll be wrong. You, can, uh, you yeah. can tell I'm joking. Who's got the mic now? Who's got the mic? We want the highest stakes. Not all of us, but a lot of us want the higher stakes, and those are going to be the trickier topics to talk about, and that's going to so, be difficult. So I, you, I, I, think that, I think that you take your. I think you actually do want to make points. Maybe. Who no, knows? I, and I, think, I would never tell you I do. Yeah, I, that's I, too self-celebrating. So let's say like, I tell I, dick jokes. No, yeah, but I, you, I, you have to admit that comics do speak truth to power. And if you watch, you well, guys, you guys well, speak we all keep jokes. Talking, we all keep talking about comics like they're all the same guy. No, 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 no. Comedy, comedy no, speaks comedy, truth. Comedy doesn't have to. Sometimes dudes are up there with a puppet, being like, "Yo, you ever whack off?" <laughs> right. That's funny too. I'm Farts are funny. I'm not saying every time there's a comic performing, but there is a reason when you go. There's, there's. The, you know, panels on TV shows. There's a reason The View has comedians on there. There's a reason that when they when, when that was you know, your first <laughs> example. All right, I cut. All right. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm not gonna. There, I'm not gonna let you. 
them do this. You're right. co- you're very correct. Right. Comedy does speak truth to power, and you two are also fucking white men. Right. So I wanted to say that. Yeah. Yeah. Dimin- Dimin- diminish your power, so no, I can speak no, no, truth no. to you. No, 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 no. Because you're a white man. You're such a fuck, baby. You're such a faggot, Shay. He's such a faggot. When it comes to something, he's such a like. Shut your bitch ass up. Sam, what? Sam, we did the same <laughs> shitty movie together. There, You're but, talking about art saying. this, art oh, that. We did the same shitty what, movie. Listen to what I'm saying. Okay, go. You are a white man. You are a white man. You are in a place of privilege where you don't necessarily 100. have to speak truth to power in right. that way. But the first time someone saw Richard Pryor, that was a big truth right. for people. The and first representation. The first comment that they don't fucking ever get to see that type of shit, it does fucking matter to right. people. Sorry. You just beat the game, and yeah. so you can play at this right. level. Yeah, but exactly. Maybe, it doesn't fucking matter. No, maybe, no, 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 Maybe no. these wait, days, wait. maybe these days, when an audience sees a white dude not being a complete pussy and talking like a normal human, there's some fucking people that are like, "Yo, can you let me finish? That's great. Great. But let me yeah. finish. <laughs> I'm just saying, I'm just yes, saying. No, you're, I'm you're sure correct. Richard Pryor would have got cut on. off correct. also. Go ahead. You're correct, but that's not what we were talking about. We're talking about this comedy from truth to power. Right. And is it another What's position? power here? Just like art, yes, it does. And when the art is usually coming from a person who is a minority. A marginalized person. person. Who's marginalized. Right. Who has it a is voice. A very yes, tool it is their voice. To bring a voice to society exactly. that isn't being heard. Right. That's not a good or right. bad thing. It is just a fucking and it's and you know thing. growing up and it's all white man white man you white man white man yeah going on yeah, 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 yeah. Really look, 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 look. Take, one thing for another, take people question. who just tell jokes y'all motherfuckers use a lot of big words right. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I understand what you guys are saying um, and and exactly this conversation is what inspired us on January sixth. <laughs> For the sequel, buddy. Regulator. Re- 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 no, no. no. <laughs> All right, next question. Who's got the mic? Okay, over here. I this, think I have a mic. Liz, who has the mic? That's oh, he, this man has a mic. Okay, sh- sh- a mic go ahead, here. sir. Um, speak up, speak up. Uh, three, three quick things. Turn up, his, turn up his mic a little bit, okay? Okay. Punching up and punching down was not from a journalist. It was from George Carlin. That was his concept. No, he I never used those words. I know exactly the clip you're talking about. I'm a nerd about comedy. He never used that. A comedy journalist used that. Well, I know what it was, you're a, about. It, was a, it was an easy step. Let's just say that. N- sure. Number one, Noam, I want to thank you for creating an environment where this kind of conversation <laughs> can go on. This is incredible. So this is really, really wonderful. Yeah. And it, I think we got kind of close to this in the conversation, but. Andrew, you were talking about your audience and seeing people in the audience that were uncomfortable laughing at certain jokes and et cetera, et cetera. And there is a clear sort of schism in comedy these days. And the question that I have is, are people that do laugh at the joke with full throttle enjoyment, could they be believing what you're saying? Maybe. And that's what concerns I, I wouldn't say that happens at my shows. I would say that happens at a show that I just happen to be on. <laughs> At my show, those people know what they're buying. You go to a pizza restaurant, you're going to get pizza, right? So they expect that. They're there for that. They want to hear those types of jokes, et cetera. So, but if I'm at like a random show or I just maybe pop in, I could see that potentially happening. Yeah, for sure. It's my job to make them feel comfortable. But your question was, does, does it make them feel like it's right? Like the opinion? No, what I would, listen, I, I'm a, I've watched your stuff and mm-hmm. I love you. And Thank you, you really do, you're on the line. You kind of, you do it incredibly intelligently and smartly. Thanks. But there are people that don't. Sure. And the question then is, are people that are laughing at those jokes, Mm -hmm. might they actually believe that? And I'll use the French shit. Yeah, yeah. I I think maybe. And but we can't control what people believe, right? Like that's not on us to control. There's crazy people out there that will go I mean just the other day I think someone attacked DL Hewley because Kanye said to do it. He didn't even say to do it. He's like, I don't like that guy. So he pulled up on deal. Like, we can't control the crazy people out there. And I don't think that we should silence ourselves because people are crazy. I also think a comedian knows when the audience is laughing for the wrong reason. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. I mean, you can't make you you can't make art that way though. I've I've definitely done jokes where like I berate white women for hours, and then and then a bunch of white men will stand up and be like, Fuck yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Finally, someone's yelling at these white bitches, and I'm like, one of those dudes is 
is gonna go home and hit his wife. Right, I don't, right. I don't Liter- know what to do about that. <laughs> literally every time Sam gets off stage, I'm like, hell yeah, Let's brother. Go. <laughs> <laughs> Keep it rolling, I brother. Don't know, like, I don't know what I'm supposed to do about that. You know what I mean? Because there's other people at the same time that there's that guy or that four guys. You know, I won't even minimize it. Or that six guys. Yeah. There's six other guys who are like, I get her train of thinking. And wow, now there's a perspective I need to hear. Or there's white women who I'm actually talking to who were like, holy shit, let me check my privilege and how I run around with it. So my focus has to be on who I'm talking to. Right. I'm not talking to them. I'm sorry you picked it up the way you did, but I'm talking over here. And if I try to tailor my conversation for them, then what conversation am I having? And you're ta- yeah. and that question takes intent out of the equation. What your okay. intention? We time for a few more. All Who's right, got go. Liz? Uh, where's the mic? Oh, this man here. Hi. Uh, thank you guys for doing this. It was really funny and enlightening. Um, I someone asked earlier, where does all this stuff come from? Who makes all these rules? And I'm wondering if I have an answer. And it's going to offend certain people on stage. But <laughs> oh, you're ready for hell yeah, brother! Oh, let it rip. <laughs> let it rip if, if this is There's a statement, it's got to be really quick. Otherwise, it's got to be a question. I did not see this going work. this way based yeah. on his voice. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I, I wonder if there's too many. I thought he was about to be like, "This is brought to you by Mailchimp." <laughs> <laughs> I was like, "Hey, kids, how's everyone doing?" <laughs> So, All right, let's hear some, it. Sometimes I wonder if there's just too many damn people from Ivy League schools. Ooh. Ivy League schools at the New York Times. Ivy League schools at tech companies. Ivy League schools at NBC making it's these your rules fault. really comfortable, <laughs> overeducated. I'm just some dumb pleb from a state school, but sometimes I feel like, whoa, what the hell's going on? This stuff is kind of crazy. So my question is, why are Ivy Leaguers so damn unfunny? Mm. Mm. Isn't SNL run by... Oh. Yeah. <laughs> You're not there anymore. I mean, asshole. what are we doing, man? <laughs> I mean, yes. <laughs> I think the whole everybody agrees yes to your question. I, I don't know. Greg Geraldo was Ivy League. Yeah, I mean, he was fucking hilarious. Yeah, I don't know. Oh I, no, I don't there's know people from Ivy League that are cool, but you yeah. can cherry pick examples. Coleman's like, Ivy League. Yeah, by the way, exceptions to the rule. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> No, but I think it's it's a it's a really it's a tight knit subculture, and it's like f- kind of for the same reason. This is going to sound like a ridiculous example, but like the, are, are the Hasidic Jews hilarious to the outside world? Yes, I, I find them yes. very yes. funny. Yes. Oh my yes. god! Oh, are they hilarious? Go to B and H on a Sunday yeah. when they're rested. <laughs> yeah. Yo, they got that Saturday crazy. off. They're full of fucking energy yeah. and unleavened bread, dude. Those guys are ready to go. That's on Passover. Oh, that's yeah. on Passover. Take it easy, yeah. Andrew. Next yeah, question. Well, Where's it? <laughs> <laughs> Some things are. <laughs> Some things we can't joke about. <laughs> Not here. I think it's wild that they wear them hats. What are them hats that look like they made a hair? <laughs> Fur hat. Y'all yeah. Don't fucking talk about them hats. Those are the. Uh, what the, are they? The hair hats. Yeah, there's the, different the, sacks. The yeah. men are so like flamboyant. Yeah, but the they, women can't. Show their hair. Yeah. The men are flamboyant and the fucking. They're like, bitch, I yeah. better not see your yes. eyes. Right. I'm like, this yeah. is these like are the wild Muslim terms. community. No, 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 no. You can see a Muslim bitch's nose. Oh, really? Hell Who has, yeah. If you talk about NOI, Nation of Islam, you get a whole chin off that bitch. Mm. <laughs> what kind of Muslim you talking about, baby? Love those chins. <laughs> <laughs> who, who has the mic? Oh, go here, go. Um, I had a question about something uh, Andrew brought up a couple yeah. times where people know what they're coming for when they come to the shows. And like Jerry Seinfeld is also one of the people that brought it up earlier on. That, you know, I can't perform at colleges anymore. People don't like what I say, but he's known as a clean comic. And then there's other people that go, that are known for like being insult comics or more on the edge. I'm curious how, what you guys think about that and also up and coming comedians that people don't know their brand yet and what they're getting and how that affects their ability to perform. Whoever wants to answer, will you summarize the question a little bit too because some of the guys... Yeah, going. like uh, some guy said he doesn't want to perform... A, uh, not some guy. Jerry Seinfeld said he doesn't want to... <laughs> one of the... A billionaire. Uh, said he doesn't want to perform at colleges because people are being pussies or something. What college is booking Jerry yeah, who Seinfeld? Cares? <laughs> yeah, these kids who grow cares? up on TikTok. Don't do colleges. 
I don't know. Also, if you're a college kid and you go to the Jerry Seinfeld show, <laughs> you're a fucking loser. I don't know. It's totally you true. You should be doing a lot more things on your Saturday night. Yeah. Jerry's yeah. not getting college offers. Yeah, I think he, like, college kids. Oh, that nigga kids. from B movie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Jerry probably got old and was there like, the well, what's fuck? going on with showers? And people were like, shut the fuck up. I don't know one but thing somebody, that a college somebody, crowd somebody wouldn't Somebody like. give him a serious answer to the, uh, We did. I said it 100%. Nobody, nobody, cares. Cares. Why why the nobody cares about his fucking jokes anymore. That's oh, yeah, why. All right, but you're, 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 uh, you're fixating on that. Uh, so, like, take the example of Namesh Patel, who came to Columbia when I was oh, there. Oh, yeah. And yes. made a joke that was like, you, you know how you know being gay is not a choice? Like, no black person ever wakes up in the morning and is like, this shit is too easy. This black shit's too easy. I'm going to choose to be gay. So it was like a, a, a joke. It's a great, it's it's a, a great it's joke. It's a great joke. And they, yeah, they come the pun, Like, the, the lesson of it is not at all bigoted. And they cut Some and people choose to be black. So, so assume. <laughs> Rachel Dolezal. Rachel Dolezal Dozo, chose to be black. Dozo's got no yeah, OnlyFans. Let him his point. Yeah. <laughs> so assume the man. Fire OnlyFans too. Five dollars a month. Peep that. Let him finish Sorry. his point. Like, I go the other way. Some people choose not. Man, to be the black. man paid for a ticket. He wants to get a question answered. Yeah. Assume he had said, you know, like Nimesh Patel tries to, uh, you know, do do college campuses. You know, how, what do you make of the fact that comedians like him can't even do uh, shows it's at places about, like Columbia? It's not about college campuses. It's about how it affects like what type of comedy you're doing, and also like how well known it is what type of comedy you're trying to do, and how that affects your ability. To when you do a college show or a corporate show, you, you're not doing it for the love of the game. You're doing it for a check. I'm not talking about college shows. Oh, okay. That's just like you're saying the the youth culture and their fucking attitude and how they perceive shit. How does that like affect us as comics when we're out here talking our shit? A little bit. I'm saying like that. Seinfeld, for example, forget the college thing, feels like he can't do certain jokes, but he's known as a clean comic, and then there's people who are known as insult comics that toe the line, and and just the type of comedy you're doing affects your ability to perform it and what you're known for. Oh, yeah, okay. bad comedy usually gets booked a lot. <laughs> right. And when you're doing good comedy, Next it's question, hard. Where's, the, where's the mic? Where's the mic? <laughs> Go. Thank you. Oh. The, the mic doesn't seem to pick up too well over the there, so over you might have to. I'm oh. over here now. Are you sure? Oh. Yeah. So, um, first of all, Sarah and, and someone uh, talked about the courage that it takes for comics and, uh, and thanked Noam for bringing them together. And I, I second that. I also wanted to just, yeah, it's not You've been canceled. I've been canceled. <laughs> TJ, will you give me your mic again? It won't be the first time. Um, I don't think it reaches. Well, let's see. Thank you. Um, but I wanted to also just, first of all, I'm a social scientist, so I'm not funny. So just don't expect funny. Um, I, I just wanted to say also that Noam has a tremendous amount of courage. And it, it took a lot of courage for yes. Noam to continue to book people who had been canceled. Yes. And, and I also wanted to acknowledge Glenn and Coleman and Roland for the courage that they've had to uh, come up with. Gay! Right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, and we've heard like nothing from Roland. And, and I, I would just really, I'd love to hear some from Roland. Roland about uh, what what he's been dealing with and and I'm drunk too. how Wait, good excellent this is the the best thing but but I mean if you don't know Roland's story you you have to look him up and and uh, and and get to know what he's just been dealing just with. slide in a DM shorty <laughs> and I also want to acknowledge slippers for me I'm very comfortable on the feet you know what. Do you, do you wanna do you wanna comment on that or no, Roland? <laughs> what do you want me to do, no? No, whatever you want. She, you, you, nothing or um, yeah, I'm gonna say is, gay, bad times, go. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. Uh, yeah, I told I told six jokes at Harvard and, and got suspended for two years. Whoa. You wanna, you wanna hear you wanna hear one of them? Hell yeah! <laughs> Hell yeah! Let's not do that. Uh, no, I want to please. hear these. But I tell you afterwards. I tell you all six of them. Are they yours? Yeah. Or are they? Are not, were you telling another comment? Like I, I damn sure wasn't telling your jokes. <laughs> <laughs> you would got a lot longer than two years. I promise you that. <laughs> <laughs> no, that white shit would have got me a promotion. <laughs> <laughs> Yo. Yo. That was good. <laughs> He's got 
That's good. <laughs> Where the fuck Thank have you, you been for the last hour? The confidence. You're welcome. I'm a comedian giving you a compliment, <laughs> he though. Just, he just, he said, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not a white man. I'm a comedian. <laughs> Oh, I'm both. Anyway, no, that, that, that's what happened. That's what she wanted to know. But I'm, I'm, I'm back at Harvard teaching and everything. Why'd great. you go back, bro? Because they pay nigga shit. There's <laughs> other Ivy League schools. <laughs> There's other schools, man. No, no I, I, I did comedy. Because now two, you can't for, complain about it. You went I back, did, hell. I did comedy for two years, and y'all motherfuckers don't pay enough. So I got... But still, you weren't doing a good job. So wait, did you, did, you do, did you do a joke in a class? And they were like, no. <laughs> That's pretty funny. What was the joke? Come on. Come on. Well, we'll, talk, we'll talk about the joke. Say right. the joke. Oh, you, you, you can look it up uh, online. There's a lot about Roland and, and the injustice that was uh, done to him online. It must have been fucked up, bro. Uh, I guess it's time for the last wasn't. question. Uh, um, no, it's not the joke. Yeah, we got to hear that joke, yeah, dude. <laughs> Who's got it? We'll go That's ahead. crazy, dude. <laughs> Oh, wait. I don't have the mic. So nobody yeah, nobody in the back got a question. Oh, we can relay the question. Thank you. Oh, Nick Gillespie from Reason is here. Okay, two questions. No statements. Just a question. Go ahead. I, You're I, Nick Gillespie? <laughs> no, he's back there. Oh. I, I feel a lot of lament for the, Sounds like a statement. the, the audience and <laughs> social media. We just like blame... Sorry. Uh, Stop just, breaking we just, shit. We just blame the Just get it, the get to it. Just get to it. Just get to it, dog. <laughs> what what does the mean? The thing the project now isn't so much about Starts comedy. Starts with a word begins with a W. Did you that. say you... <laughs> Whoa, did he say you was from the project? But, but don't, we, don't we really need to be, learn how to behave better in public with social media? I mean, this is like the 40s or 50s with cigarettes, and like we have to accept that things are the way they are. And we have to train the public to, you know, use these things better. We do need to train the public. Better. Dude, I, what yes. are you, are you working big tech, motherfucker? <laughs> no, 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 look, 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 don't, don't, don't mess with them. I, I totally agree. I, I feel I, bad. It's, it's descended into a comedy yeah, show. They're just, I, I, just I using have, uh, you. are just pushing up balls and they're hitting them over the... <laughs> I've gone to executive is, coaching now, you know, so I totally agree with you. Now I know how to walk in a straight line with a real tight ass. So I'm, I'm good. <laughs> I'm curious, when you say train people to use social media, you mean like all of us, like comics and the masses, or what, what do you, I, I just want to. I just observe, like, you know, the, the joke earlier about someone didn't know that they could laugh. People don't know who they are, they don't know how to behave in public, they're playing an act. Mm -hmm. You know, they just don't feel that they can trust themselves and their reactions to things. Yeah. People are freaking out, people don't know what real problems are. I see that as like a positive thing, that people are freaking out, you know, at so many irrelevant and consequential things. Sir? So, we have to do something about this, this is something... Sir, because it's being recorded and we not, you don't have a mic, that's the only reason I want, I want to stop, because it won't, there's going to be dead air on the, on the recording. Sorry. But um, we'll just you cut should that. be sorry. <laughs> I was filming that. Mr. Gillespie, too. somebody bring the, the mic to him over there. Uh, you wanted to. You, wanted you did to help great. This has got to be the last. You did one. great. I, yeah, I, it wasn't that you were saying it was It, was it wasn't that you were saying anything wrong man. or anything. I, mean, was, I, I kind of agree with what you're saying, but we we had to. You're a good guy. Uh, thanks. Um, I just wanted to ask, uh, and Noam, you brought it up. Corporate America is just like pussy central now, right? Um, is that new? And Which whether or not it is it, how do you get how do you get corporate America to stand up and not fire people immediately whenever they when they get like forty tweets or something? Huh? <laughs> I, I don't. I don't. I, be honest. I don't care about corporate America. I don't give a fuck. I don't operate within corporate America. I think that if you're a comedian, you should and you want to create your own content, you should be creating your own shit, and then get people to advertise on it. And if they don't like it, get other people to do it. Go on the road, make all your money on the road, give away your content, and that's what I've done. I've been able to do the comedy I've wanted to do during this whole thing. I haven't stopped saying a single fucking joke. I don't know why these comics want to keep working for like Comedy Central and shit. Nobody's gonna watch it. You're not gonna go anywhere. There's well, I would like to say HBO is a great corporation. <laughs> <laughs> I really think that they treat me well. I think the work culture is positive. I enjoy you, you it very drunk. much there. <laughs> You're drunker than I thought. So I, I would think that the answer is that it happens incrementally and that uh, seeing Netflix uh, not buckle on Chappelle. And then I think the Spotify thing was really huge because what Rogan did was really he grabbed onto what we thought was the third rail of career ending violations. And it seemed to evaporate. And the next corporation 
A, will say, well, actually, Spotify got away with it. And B, it will be harder for them to fire somebody for the same things that Rogan didn't get fired. The, for, I yeah, think. it's true. Yeah. The Netflix thing is tricky. It, they didn't buckle for Chappelle, but everybody else freaked out. Also, you bitch nigga, you did a Netflix special. I, I lost my Amazon special after this. But you thing. did it, so you, you can't be like, fuck corporations going I told you, I said. Make your money. I said. Also, watch my Netflix hey, special. Hey, hey. Yeah, That's yeah. what you just said. All right, all right. No, I you said did the I same love movie. Them, I said I love them forever. You, I said nah, I before forever. that, you were like, oh, we're artists, and if I die in a, yeah, I said, the fuck woods. Yeah, the internet. <laughs> I said, fuck the internet. You guys into the woods, Sam. What the fuck are you talking about? The woods. I've been in the woods. You've been DMing me about St. Bart's, not the fucking woods. <laughs> you're a bougie ass white girl at heart. And that's why How St. Bart's. And that's why I love HBO. There we go. It all adds okay. up for me. Baby. My, point is, my point is, I did the HBO shit on my own terms. I did it on my own terms too. I think you can do it on your own terms. Exactly. The way but you create your own terms, you create leverage. But I think it's very okay. lovely to just be right, listen, corporation, all. corporations just Fuck care about all. money. <laughs> and we have another show coming in. And we got we got our <laughs> So funny. Glenn, do you have any uh, uh word HBO, corporation? Any final words? <laughs> what a wonderful evening, eh? This has been the Glenn Show at Comedy Salon. Bravo! Thank you for having us. I want I want to I want to personally thank Glenn Lowry for having this idea and for coming all the way down to do this. Uh, I hope everybody will listen to his podcast and his uh, Glenn show on video. I um I don't know if it's, I think there's a tremendous amount of intellectual energy that's going on now around Glenn and Coleman and and maybe it's because um the, Black heterodox intellectuals have more freedom than other people do now, but for whatever the reason is, I think that the kind of stuff that Glenn's talking about has more intellectual energy and is more challenging of uh, preconceived notions than anything else out there right now. So I would really encourage everybody to spend some time listening to Glenn Lowry and his show and check out Coleman's podcast as well. Thank you guys very, very much for doing this. Hello, Norm. Thank you, everybody. Uh, and thank you to our comedians who made the show. Not at all, man. Not at all. Awesome. Good to be with you, man.